So you notice that when we talk about the data that we input into LLMs, we talk about tokens. So what are those and how do we create them? So we could create tokens simply from the words in the input sequence. Well, actually, this is not the best strategy because this tends to create very large vocabularies. We cannot deal with morphologically rich languages like Turkish or Finnish. We don't handle very well the variants of the different words like Puyol or tense variations. And it is not very great for the evolving languages. So we could create tokens from the characters in the sequence. Well, actually, this is not great either. We have much longer sequences. We need to train models longer just for them to relearn the structure of the words. And it makes the training a bit noisy. It tends to be a bit more advantageous to create subword level embeddings when we train models. So let's see the byte pair encoding algorithm to tokenize input sequences into subword tokens. A typical strategy to tokenize text is a byte pair encoding strategy, or BPE. This is a method that is used in many LLMs right now. It has been used in GPT-1, GPT-2, GPT-3, ChatGPT, Lama 2. So this is considered to be one of the standards when it comes to tokenizing text. Let's try to see an example of that process. Let's consider this example here. So let's imagine that I had some text in my training set and I already tokenized it into some word level tokens. When I say word level tokens, I also mean to include the white spaces and all the different punctuations that may appear in the text. I don't throw anything away. So this would be the different words that I would see in my text. And you will notice that I included some white spaces between the different letters, the different characters, because I want to capture the fact that I'm going to consider the different characters separately. And I'm going to show you why. So the first step in the process is to start with a character level tokenization. So I broke down the text into words and now I'm going to extract the different characters in those different words. So here are the different characters that I can find in those different words. So this is my initial character level vocabulary. And one reason why I break down the text into words first is because it is more computationally efficient to do that. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to look in that text and I'm going to try to find frequent pairs of characters. So for example, you know, you have a pair of characters here, L, O, and O, W. Those are pairs of characters that are following each other. And you can notice that L, O appears two times here in that text. So let's count the pairs frequencies. So here, for example, we have L, O that appear two times. We have O, W that appear two times. We have W, I that appear one time, etc. What I'm going to do now is to find the pair of characters that have the highest frequency. And I'm going to include that pair of characters into the dictionary. And I'm going to replace in the text the character level tokens by the pair of characters tokens. So here I take LO and I add it to the character level vocabulary. You can see that I have LO here. So I expand the vocabulary. And now I take the original text and I replace the original character level tokens by the pair of characters token. So you can see that LO now does not have any space in between and the spaces were helping me to capture that merging between the different pairs of characters. Merging is a typical concept in bi-pair encoding. So I'm going to merge the different characters together into tokens. And this will help me tokenize the text. And I iterate this process. So let's look at the second iteration. So we start from the text where we already tokenize the LO pair and we do the same thing. So we have the token dictionary, which is the one that we had earlier. And now we're going to count the pair frequencies. So you will notice that I have LOW counted as a pair of characters. This is not a pair of characters. It is a pair of tokens. So now that LO is a token, I'm going to look at the tokens that follow each other. And LO and W follow each other into a pair of tokens. And I have two of that pair of tokens. I have LOW here and I have LOW here. And obviously, I compute the frequency of the other pairs of tokens. So you notice that I move from characters to tokens. Now that we don't only consider characters, I'm going to call them tokens. 
Okay, so I take one of the pairs of tokens that have the highest frequency. So you would notice that there are other pairs of tokens that have a similar frequency, but I can take the first one here and I will include it into the vocabulary. So now as part of the vocabulary, I have LO. Additionally, I have LOW. So I added two new tokens to the vocabulary. And now I'm going to merge again the most frequent pair. So I notice that LOW is a frequent pair of tokens. So I'm going to replace in the original text the character level tokens by the aggregated tokens. So here I replace the individual characters LOW by the LOW token. And you would notice that I remove the different white spaces between the different characters to capture the fact that it is only one token here. I have another one here that I should have put in red. And we iterate. So we started with a character level tokenization and we looked at pairs of the most frequent tokens and we merged the pairs with the highest frequency. In the second iteration, we added LOW as token to the dictionary. In the third iteration, we would find that ES is a new token that we can add to the dictionary. In the fourth iteration, we would find that EST is an additional token that we can add to the dictionary. In the fifth iteration, we would find that EST white space is a new token that we can add to the dictionary. And every time we add a new token to the dictionary, we replace in the original text the character level tokens by the new tokens. And you will notice that we replace the character level tokens by the longest tokens available in the dictionary. We could iterate this process many times and at each iteration we are adding a new token to the dictionary. Each iteration is called a merge. So every time we merge, we add a new token to the dictionary. So we can easily control the size of the dictionary by deciding on how many iterations we're going to have in that process. So the number of iterations or merges is some kind of hyperparameter that we can choose to adjust to the specific training data that we may have. The bigger is your training data, the more merges you may want to do. The smaller is your training data, the less merges you may want to do. For example, GPT-1 has about 40,000 merges. GPT-2, GPT-3, ChatGPT, they have about 50,000 merges. Lama 2 has about 32,000 merges. And this is a hyperparameter that you can choose to adjust based on the specific learning task that you may have. So let's summarize. We start with a character level tokenization, and then we count the pair frequencies. We then merge the most frequent pair, and we repeat the process. At the end, we need to consolidate the vocabulary, and we can use that vocabulary to tokenize the next text.